This video will help you determine if the noun in a sentence is the subject, the direct object, or the indirect object, and which case Latin noun would work to complete the sentence. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, let's recognize the various parts of the sentence. The subject answers the question of who does the verb. The direct object always answers the question of the subject verbs whom or the subject verbs what. The indirect object answers the question of to whom or for whom after the verb. For example, here's our sentence. The banker gives money to the merchant. If you ask who gives money, you'll see that the banker does. Thus, the banker is the subject of the sentence. If you want to find the direct object, you ask the subject verbs what, the banker gives what. When you ask that question, the banker gives, you'll see the answer is money. The banker is giving the money. Thus, the money is the direct object in the sentence. And then finally, the indirect object answers the question, to whom or for whom? So, the banker gives money to whom? To the merchant. The banker gives money for whom? For the merchant. So the merchant is the indirect object in the sentence. Now, in Latin, of course, the subject of the sentence is always in the nominative case. The direct object is in the accusative case, and the indirect object is in the dative case. So when we look at our example, the banker gives money, we need the nominative ending for banker. That, of course, would be argentari. Your choices are argentari us, argentari o, or argentari um. And the correct answer would be argentari us, because U.S. is the nominative ending. The next word, money. That is, as we said before, the direct object, which is in the accusative case. So we need the accusative ending for money. There's a, I, or um. A, of course, is the nominative. I is the dative. And the correct answer is um in the accusative case. And then finally, the word merchant. We determined that the merchant is the one to whom the banker gives money, so he is the indirect object. Indirect objects? Let's see, that takes a dative case. So we would have mercator, mercator e, or mercator m. And of course, being a Latin genius, you know that the dative ending is the long i there. Okay, let's try another example. Okay. Let's check out the next sentence. The teacher gave candy to the class. So first, let's see. What is the teacher doing in the sentence? Does it answer the question of who gives? Does it answer the question of the subject verbs what? Or does it answer the question of somebody verbs to whom or for whom? The teacher is answering the question of who verbs, so it is the subject. We'll mark that here, the subject. Okay, let's look at the next noun. Teacher gave candy. Let's figure out what the word candy is doing in the sentence. Does the candy give? No, it's not the subject. Does it answer the question, the teacher verbs whom? The teacher gives what? Yes, it does. The teacher gives what? The teacher gives candy. So there is your direct object. And now, let's see, to the class. Does it answer the question of to whom or for whom? The teacher gives candy to whom? To the class. Thus, that is the indirect object. Remember, we've got each noun labeled in terms of what it does. Now we have to think about the various cases. The subject in a Latin sentence is always nominative. The direct object is always accusative, and the indirect object is always dative. So if we go through our noun ending charts, we know the teacher is a first declension noun. I'm going to write those endings in order. Nominative, 
dative, accusative, candy. We're going to call that food kibum. That's kibus. So that's U-S, nominative, dative, accusative. And then the class, oh, we'll call it the school, which is ludus, nominative, accusative, dative. Let's pick the right one. So let's see. For the nominative, we need A. Teacher is going to end in A here. For the word candy, we've decided that it is accusative. The accusative ending is U-M, kib boom. And then to the class, ludo is your dative ending because you know your charts. So that's how you figure out which ending to use in these types of problems. All right, let's try the next one. Again, in order to figure out the case, you have to know what each noun is doing in the sentence. Let's look at brother Bob. Is he the subject? Does he answer the question of who gives? Yes, he does. So he is the subject of the sentence. Now let's look at the word Gifford. This one is a little bit trickier, Gifford. Does brother Bob give Gifford? Does he put Gifford on a plate and hand him away? No, he does not. So Gifford is not the direct object. It does not answer the question of what brother Bob gives. Brother Bob is not keeping, giving Gifford away. He is keeping Gifford. So Gifford is not the direct object. Can Gifford be the indirect object? Let's see. Brother Bob gives to Gifford or for Gifford? Yes, that works. So we know in this instance that Gifford is the indirect object. Now look at the word treat. Let's see, can it be the direct object? Does it answer the question of what Brother Bob gives? Brother Bob gives what? Brother Bob gives a treat. Yes, he is sending the treat away to Gifford. So the tree is the direct object. Again, we are Latin geniuses. We know that subjects, oopsies, let's see. We know that subjects are in the nominative case and indirect objects are in the dative case and direct objects are in the accusative case. So brother Bob, that's the word frater. Frater, let's see. So that would be frater because that's nominative. Um, let's see, Gifford is the indirect object. He's a dog. So that would be canny, third declension, dative, singular. And the treat, that would be food again. So that would be accusative of kibbus, which is kibum. Frater, canny, kibum. And then I'll even give you the verb, dead it. Great job. Let's try the next example. Okay, let's see. The cook prepared food for me. Can we find the subject of the sentence? Who is preparing the food? The cook is, so that is the subject. Let's look at the word food. Does it answer what does the cook prepare? Yes, you can say what does the cook prepare? Duh, the cook prepares the food, yay. So we know that is our direct object. And for me answers the question, the cook prepares the food for whom? That's correct. The cook prepares the food for the indirect object, for me. By now, this should be old news. Can you remember what case the subject is in in a Latin sentence? That's right, nominative. And the direct object is always, always, always in the accusative case. And then, of course, the indirect object is in the da 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 dative case. So let's try that. The cook, of course, the nominative of cook is cockless. The food is the direct object, so it's kibbus, kibbo, kibbum. Oh, there's your accusative, kibbum. And then the for me chart. You know what? I'll even give you the whole chart. Ego. Nihi. May. Remember our charts are nominative, dative, accusative, and we've already decided that we need the dative case. So the correct answer we're here would be mihi. Yay. And we'll give you a verb for closure. That verb, of course, is para wit. Thus we have kakwas kibum mihi parawit. 
Yay, good for you. Let's try another example. Okay, here we go. The poet recited a poem for you. Can you find the subject of the sentence? To do that, let's look at the verb, recited, and you say, who recited? And we all know the poet recited. So there's your subject. Okay, let's look at the word poem. Is the poem the direct object or the indirect object? Remember, you go back to the question. The subject verbs what? The subject verbs what? The poet recited what? The poet yes, recited yeah. da, 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 a poem. That is your direct object. And then we have for you. And that answers the question of to whom or for whom. The poet recited a poem to whom? The poet recited a poem for whom? For you, for your indirect object. And remember, the subject of a sentence is always nominative. The direct object is always accusative, and the indirect object is always dative. I bet you can do this now. The poeta, there's your subject. Your direct object poem. Poema, or poem I, or poem mom. And you are a smart Latin student, so you know that that is a trick ending, and that is a trick ending, and this is your accusative. And then for you, I'll even give you the chart again. To, tibi, or te. Let's see. We need the dative ending. To is nominative, tibi is dative, and te is accusative. So the correct answer, of course, is tibi. Okay, there you are. You've had a few examples of finding the subject, picking the case that goes with the subject, and then making sure your ending matches what's on your case charts. Great job.